Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so for the English speaking amongst you, I am Sarah's brother, John. And for the Maltese speaking amongst you, Bonjour. <laughs> I am Sarah's woo, John. <laughs> and I'm delighted to speak to you today about my little sister. Sarah and I have pretty much been best friends since we met back in the 80s. <laughs> there has been some ups and downs. She didn't speak to me for a while after I filled the battery pack of her baby doll with just a wee on me with ketchup. <laughs> she never appreciated any of the relentless attacks I rained on her Sylvanian family villages. And I never once got a thank you for any of the haircuts I gave her Barbie. <laughs> but that little girl has grown up into this incredible woman. And today, she spends most of her time buying toys for the children she does such amazing work with, and we are an action figure to keep Anna happy as well. <laughs> Growing up, as is pretty obvious from all of the photos on the board, I was definitely the better looking of the two. <laughs> However, puberty was quite unkind to me, and it's allowed Sarah to quite dramatically overtake. Sarah, I think we can all agree today that you look absolutely stunning. <laughs> you might think that being the only male growing up in a house with two women, both with a deep interest in union psychoanalysis, would be a bar of months. <laughs> but both my mum, who also looks fabulous today, guys, both my mum and my sister were then and remain now the two most important people in my life. So as well as eclipsing me in the beauty stakes, Sarah definitely overtook me in the educational stakes, becoming easily the most qualified member this family has ever produced. Sarah has a natural intelligence for people and a very deep intelligence in her field. I say in her field because Sarah is prone to the odd unique thought process. Only, <laughs> only the other day, Sarah and I were sitting on the sofa talking about love and life, and she turns to me and she says, John, isn't it so weird that I'm going to marry a man from Malta? <laughs> and so I've been aware of it for a while. But goes, no, John, do you not see the coincidence? He's like, no. John, I am marrying a man from Malta, and I have always loved Maltese. <laughs> Anyone that knows Sarah will know that she is an absolute rock. Sarah, you are the strongest person I know, and you demonstrate that strength in the most wonderful way through your kindness, your compassion, and your deep love for family, friends, and strangers' children. <laughs> That's why me, Mum, and absolutely everybody here is completely delighted for you to be so happy today. Yeah. People, <laughs> yes, <clap. laughs> Alan, <laughs> welcome to the family. <laughs> no, seriously, I am absolutely delighted to finally be able to call you my who. <laughs> Mum was actually the first of our family to meet Alan, and. Curiosity runs in the Barrett family. I obviously gave mum a quick call afterwards and I said, what was he, what was he like? And mum says, do you know what? He was really lovely. He was really so nice. He was so kind to Sarah. And you know, I think he's a really, really nice man there. And I thought, that's a good one for you. So I gave Sarah a call. And she picked up the phone and she said, John, oh my God, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> so what, what was embarrassing? She said, you know mum? I said, yeah, I know mum. So Mum found every single one of Alan's jokes hilarious. <laughs> and I said, what's, what's the problem with that? And I said, well, Alan isn't actually that funny. <laughs> I was like, oh. And she goes, John, I'm absolutely serious about this. I'm absolutely serious. I think Mum fancies Alan. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, 
So after Alan so easily went over Mark, I wasn't far behind, and nor was the rest of my family. Alan, we are delighted to have you in our family, and the way you look at Sarah, the way you take care of her, and your general being is just the most we could ever ask for. Mum and I were having this conversation just today. I know that you're going to have an incredibly bright future, because if you're good enough for that woman, you're capable of anything. Speaking of family, it's pretty obvious that I'm not the father of the bride, but I am stood squarely where he should be. There are others in our family who would have loved to be here for today as well. Our nanny Sylv, our husband Bob, our granddad Nigel, and our uncle Steph. The toast to absent friends is always so melancholy and doesn't really fit with it today. It focuses on what we're missing out on, rather than what we have because of them. Without any of those people I just mentioned, no one would be here at this incredible venue today. No one would have seen Sarah, looked down the aisle looking so beautiful. Little Grace wouldn't have been the cutest flower girl in the world. And none of us would have a chance to dance like idiots into the night. So I'm not going to taste their absence in the normal way. Today is about celebration. And it's the celebration of the life that they had that allowed us to live ours. So today we're celebrating Sarah. We're celebrating Alan. We are celebrating the fact that Mr. and Mrs. Frigeri just happened. <laughs> so when I ask you to, would you please put down your glasses and blow the roof off with your gratitude? <laughs> to us friends. Finally, I'm supposed to offer some pearls of wisdom to the bride and groom, but as my mum keeps reminding me every week, I'm dangerously underqualified. <laughs> but I did grow up with Sarah. When she was a little girl, I watched her play with her toys, and it's not Barbie that wanted the Malibu beach house or the sports car. All of Sarah's Barbies just wanted Ken. The Sylvanian families never got all of the trinkets and treats that they could have. Every Christmas, they just got more Sylvanian to add to the family. Sarah understands that it's people, that it's laughter, that it's love, and that it's friendship that are important. So in many ways, you've been practicing the ingredients for a perfect marriage for your whole life. And I'm delighted that 20 years after those toys went away, you finally found one you can't live without. Superman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you join me in a toast? To the bride and groom. How on earth do I follow? <laughs>